So, Robert Malone is with Joe Rogan. Uh, He's going to fucking spread some vaccine misinformation. As you know, has crushed COVID. Yeah, to, to explain what they did to do that, because it's kind of fascinating. It's it's not clear. Um, Wait, who crushed COVID? Uttar Pradesh, as you yeah. know, has crushed COVID. Yeah, Uttar to, Pradesh? To explain what they did to do that, because it's kind of fascinating. It's it's not clear. Um, what are the drugs? So what they did do, what we do know, and there Ask. there's some backstory to this that we could go into if you want to but the observation is there was a decision made the virus was just ripping through Uttar Pradesh it has almost the same dude it's a, it's a region in India by the way but like uh the 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 thing is that i, I will never i i always find it really fucking funny when conservatives and like misinformation specialists love fucking finding okay love finding like any random circumstance they can to put their fucking talons on it and to milk it as best as they can while spreading so much misinformation okay so Uttar Pradesh declared as COVID affected state announcement to be effect till 31st of March. This is what happened. I mean, it was there. COVID was like ripping through India, right? Uh, it's a gigantic area. I mean, it's India. But the best part about this, the best part about conversations like this is that they just like, they lie. Okay. They just straight up lie. Like they'll, they'll take something about Japan and they'll just completely lie about it because who the fuck in America is going to go and actually seek out, you know, primary sources about like the way that the Japanese state has dealt with COVID. No one, right? Especially no one in that audience is going to be like, oh, this guy that I love, this guy that I fucking love, uh, Joe Rogan has this doctor that I think I should respect telling me that like this region in India has actually eviscerated covid i suspect with ivermectin that's what he's gonna say right that's where that's where we're gonna go which by the way india is not impacted by fucking mass anti-vaxxer uh, conspiracists and hesitancy they could be but we can't even get to that stage in many regions of india because you know the original reason why COVID was ripping through india was because we denied them vaccines okay that's why that's the fucking problem. And this guy got banned recently from uh, uh, Twitter for straight up fucking lying about uh, what occurred. Uh, I mean, straight up fucking, uh, you know, spreading COVID misinformation. So, of course, Joe Rogan had to do an emergency pod. Huh. <sighs> India has their own vaccines and plenty of them. Dog, they didn't at the time, okay? Do you not remember last year or in the beginning of this fucking year, sorry? Do you not remember what was going on? That India was tasked with mass producing vaccines for the rest of the third world, okay? But we refused to open up IP, uh, or the, the patents for vaccines so that Indian uh, companies or Indian uh, facilities could fucking literally produce their own version well, last year, 2021, you know what I mean, okay? I'm saying it was last year, dot, 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 okay? Yeah, you corrected me. You fucking owned me. It's insane. Surviving on one cent for a week? This is a penny. Okay, we're gonna, this is, we're gonna do a lot of these today, I think. I suspect that's coming. I wonder if Tim Pool will reply to that last tweet. But anyway, so I'm not entirely certain as, as to what happened in Uttar Pradesh, okay? Uh, I don't know. But from what I understand, it says Uttar Pradesh was declared as a COVID-affected state and the announcement to be in effect till 31st of March. But what I do know is that a lot of these misinformation specialists love utilizing uh, countries that are far away as examples to bastardize, okay? 
What's your take? Lamau, va mass vaccine hesitancy in the U.S. What's the point of the vaccine if it doesn't stop the transmission? Uh, I don't know. The point of the vaccine is that 90 plus percent of people that don't get the vaccine, okay, are the ones that are uh, dying in hospitals, okay? Not 90% of the unvaccinated, but when you get COVID and you die at a hospital, 90% of those people, 90 plus percent of those people are unvaccinated. So at this stage, you literally have to fucking be delusional to not recognize the efficacy of the vaccine in stopping the worst symptoms of COVID when you end up getting COVID. It's the fact that we are only focusing on vaccines here in the U.S. and not on therapies and treatments is fucking bananas. We are focusing on therapies and treatments, you dumbass. We have yeah, monoclonal antibodies. Always. We have Pfizer that recently got emergency use authorization for a pill that also treats COVID. The treatment and the therapies, though, are not 100% either. And that's the problem with medicine. You should have treatment and therapies, okay, of course, and you should take preventative measures. Except a lot of you dumb motherfuckers don't want the treatment and the therapy and you don't even want the fucking preventative measures. It is completely idiotic to basically just side with COVID. I love this though. We got a crystal mommy. Christy stands in the chat. I assign you white settler himbo. <laughs> what? <laughs> the fuck? Never been called a settler. All right. Following a surge in COVID-19 cases, Uttar Pradesh has been declared a COVID-affected state. Additional Chief Secretary of Health Amit Mohan Prasad in an order dated 27th of September said the decision has been taken after assessing the situation. So one of the things that uh, they also refuse to mention is the 17 other fucking measures that a lot of these uh, foreign states engage in. So they'll be like, they gave ivermectin to people and that's how they deleted COVID. And it's like, first of all, they didn't delete COVID. Secondly, they also had like, usually, not in every case, but usually they'll have like massively rigorous lockdown measures, okay? Enforced mask wearing in public. All things that like, plenty of these anti-vaxxers and all these conspiracies disagree with, okay? And then also on top of that, and then also on top of that, there's like uh, uh, geographic differences. There's cultural differences. There's differences in fucking diet, okay? There are differences in so many different factors. Asshole. There are so many fucking factors that, uh, uh, that play a role in... in how to deal and uh, how to deal with a deadly disease outbreak that they completely avoid talking about. Just like you avoid the top of the hour ad break because at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break that comes. Okay. And the kind of avoidance that Dr. Robert Malone engages in is not good, but the kind of avoidance I'm talking about avoiding the top of the hour ad break to enjoy an ad free broadcasting experience. Well, that's actually a good thing. Okay. Not a bad thing. That's a good thing. And the way to do that is, of course, by getting gifted a sub. Okay. If you want an ad-free broadcasting experience, or if you're not lucky, uh, like you didn't receive one sandwich, please, as five gifted subs, then making your own luck by subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Here's the one minute ad break now. Your. Uncle Rusty, thank you for the tank of the subs. Let's keep going. Populations in the United States. It's huge, okay? Um, dense, urban, poor, all the characteristics of the stereotypes of the Indian countryside. Um, and uh, the virus is just ripping through there and causing all kinds of death and disease. And the decision was made out of desperation in that province to deploy early treatments as packages widely throughout the province. Rainbow Bun 623. a number of agents. The composition has not been formally disclosed. It was done in coordination with, United, with um, WHO. For the record, I know I paused this immediately, but what he's talking about in vague terms is that Uttar Pradesh, uh, Uttar, Uttar Pradesh in India, this massive state in India, was able to destroy COVID, right? Like 
completely fucking get over it. And uh, I suspect what he's actually claiming is this article that was making the rounds on this independent site, according to pointer.org. India, no COVID-19 cases in 24 hours after implementing ivermectin protocol. They are hiding the truth from you. So a couple of these fucking weird websites, of course, ran with this misinformation that we have already shown is completely incorrect. So the premise that he's launching this argument is that Uttar Pradesh, which declared as a COVID affected state uh, on December 27th, is actually COVID free. So that's so his argument is completely based off of a fucking faulty premise. OK, completely made up like. COVID is ripping through consistently still. Uh, Uttar Pradesh. And yet, in the world of Dr. Robert Malone, there is no COVID in Uttar Pradesh. So that's that's the number one. Uh, that's the number one falsehood. Okay. So that is completely made up. Uh, and according to pointer.org, uh, there's no scientific basis for the claims of ivermectin success in Uttar Pradesh, India. And in order, if we're going to go down the fucking... Uh, we're going to go down the rabbit hole. Apparently, this story popped off on Facebook, obviously. And I don't even have fucking, you know, I don't have Facebook, so I can't really track this sort of stuff that well. But obviously, no one in Joe Rogan's audience is going to fucking seek after this misinformation. They're going to think the guy I love and the guy I stand for is talking to Big Doctor Man, so he must be true. Meanwhile, the Big Doctor Man is just repeating or at least using, uh, 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 launching an argument off the faulty premise that was made up in a Facebook post, okay? They are hiding the truth from you. They do not want you to know about ivermectin. The story includes a tweet that says, Uttar Pradesh, India, announced the state is COVID-19 free, proving the effectiveness of deworming drug ivermectin. Now, that post was flagged as a part of Facebook's efforts to reduce combat, uh, uh, reduce and combat false news and misinformation. Less than three. Okay? Gateway Pundit ran with it, though, regardless, because that's another, uh, that's another psychotic uh, conspiracy theorist website. Um, and, uh, this supposed success of ivermectin and preventing COVID-19 in India have been around for months and have recently popped up again as India's as case India, numbers subside. Like India stopped recommending the use of ivermectin like for the management of the virus in September, citing a lack of scientific evidence. So like India's very own council of medical research. Healing. Okay, so I did get a download about ivermectin in the summer, so you got me on the crystal mom shit. So you are aware that you're just like spreading weird fucking misinformation then. Okay, so I agree. Should we be doing all we can and then you're here trying to dunk on ivermectin? Yes, because ivermectin, unlike monoclonal antibodies or the Pfizer emergency use authorized pill, uh, including other emergency use authorized treatments, is not effective in treating COVID. So you can take ivermectin if you want, maybe even to the degree where it sheds your bacterial lining, I mean, your, your intestinal lining, but ultimately it doesn't fucking matter, okay? I am anti people who are basically lying to the public so they can get fucking clout. You are literally saying, even if it's fucking misinformation, who gives a shit? Even if it's misinformation, maybe it'll help. And that's psychotic, okay? This guy says ivermectin literally saved an entire state in India, though. No, it didn't. The Indian healthcare authorities, the Indian Council of Medical Research, literally openly states that ivermectin did not save, and there was not enough fucking evidence that ivermectin did anything to save an entire region of India. Your word in the it chat, in the Facebook fucking memes that you have read, goes against the actual medical authorities in the country that you are discussing. That is bananas to me. That is completely psychotic. You are saying, la, 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 I can't hear you. My deep, dark hole that I'm in, this hole of misinformation, and the feelings that I have of comfort from, you know, getting this misinformation be reinforced to me in my echo chamber is more important than the actual factual truth. That is crazy. Okay? 2022 brain rot. They removed hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin because they found that there was no effect on length of stay, no effect on clinical recovery, and no difference in ADE 
and a high risk bias in many studies, especially with the ones showing benefit, level of certainty for mortality benefit is low. And the reason why they posted this is because it's fucking true that all of the studies that point to hydroxychloroquine back in like 2020, early stages, and ivermectin this past year and including now have usually been non-peer reviewed and incredibly fucking biased meta studies that straight up avoid uh, studies that show no efficacy or rather include studies that are also not fucking peer reviewed that, uh, that, that lie and greatly, greatly fucking so bump up the numbers too. with like one or two studies that are completely based on faulty research. You can't do that. What is this? No, don't ban him for saying uh, the Stockholm Syndrome is real here. The confirmation bias is unreal here. What do y'all think about the Nuremberg Code? What? The Nuremberg Code? It's for prevention, you fucking idiot. I mean, I'm definitely on banning this psycho. I want to see what kind of saucy shit this motherfucker is going to say. Oh, my Lord. Okay. That may be, but what these studies have not avoided is the top of the hour ad break. I already ran it, didn't I? Did I fucking forget to run the top of the hour ad break? I thought I did. Wait, has it been three fucking hours? Did I? What? I did. I definitely did. I ran the third one. Yeah, eight minutes ago, I ran it. Oh my God, you debated me into almost double running ad breaks. All right, let's keep going. No, I ran it. I ran it eight minutes ago. I ran it at, at uh, two, like perfectly at two. Okay. And these studies, these medical findings that led the, the authority, okay, in India to stop recommending ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, okay, are the exact same studies that we have had access to for a very long time. Okay. A similar headline from the Gateway Pundit, where he talked about that India stopped recommending its use of ivermectin for management of the virus in September, citing a lack of scientific evidence for its benefits. In the United States, the FDA has approved no, ivermectin for use in humans for treating such things as parasitic yeah, yeah. worms, head lice, and rosa shea. But advise against it. Yeah, it's like it's to cure fucking river blindness. But advise against taking it to prevent or treat the coronavirus. Merck, which is the largest manufacturer of uh, uh, the human version of ivermectin also, which stands to benefit from making the most money from ivermectin curing COVID personally also released, uh, warnings to not use ivermectin as a treatment for COVID because there is no data available that shows its efficacy. So the guys that are the guys that stand to benefit from it, like Big Pharma, which we fucking despise for understandable reasons, even they're saying, don't fucking do this. Like, we, we, we would make all the money in the world if we just fucking lied about it, but we're saying, don't do this. Merck itself also has a COVID treatment pill, too. Now, anyway, let's keep going. Let's continue with this. Oh, and whatever was in those packages... um was rumored to include ivermectin, um, but there was a specific visit of Biden to Modi, and um, a decision was made in the Indian government not to disclose the contents of those packages that were being deployed in Uttar Pradesh, which they're still there, and Uttar Pradesh is flatlined right now. The rest what? of the world is yelling about it. Again, Uttar Pradesh is not flatlined, like we said, so that is a faulty premise that he launched his, his entire, his entire argument revolves around the faulty premise that, or, or the just fake news that, uh, uh, that Uttar Pradesh has, you know, is fine with COVID. There's no new COVID cases in Uttar Pradesh. It's bullshit. Now, not only that, but also he's jumping on extra fucking, uh, weird, like conspiracies about how. Joe Biden wet, met with Modi and there was like secret packages and we don't know what was in the content of those packages. Of those there was like none of this, none of this is fucking real. Okay. That were being deployed in Uttar Pradesh, which they're still there. 
and Uter produced And even if this was, even if this was completely 100% factual, okay, that Joe Biden actually went and uh, and had like a, a, a secret, uh, had a, you know, secret fucking, what is this? Uter Pradesh is definitely flatlined. What are you talking about? Uttar Pradesh's new case statistics. I mean, this does prove a uh, flatlining. So why the fuck are they uh, revealing? If there's only 200 and if there's only 200 cases, why did they re-release or re-fucking? Uh, why would they do this? Why would they declare it as COVID-affected state? Oh, because cases aren't uh, because cases aren't reported. I mean, it's it's going from eight cases to fucking 246 which means it'll still pop off again, but it's the nowhere near the 30,000 like it was in May. Transmission. Just because it's increasing for the past week doesn't mean that it's like... Wolf. Lack of testing as well, according to that Pointer article? Okay. That makes sense. Oh, you looked at all time. I mean, the case numbers are still very low, but it is increasing. Watching you while at work. You but it's me still very low. Hassle. Like, this number is very low, but if this had not been the case, if the, if the Indian government or the Uttar Pradesh government had not declared this, uh, declared COVID to be a problem in the region itself, According to the Union Health Ministry, Uttar, Uttar Pradesh reported two cases of Omicron, both of whom have recovered from the virus. If the if the government did not actually fucking implement uh, new measures, then I would say this is bullshit. Look at the look at the data. This data is like you know this data doesn't show like a significant bump. I mean it does. It goes from fucking ten cases to uh, two hundred and forty six, but ultimately it still doesn't matter. The article is from two days ago. Chatter, who was wondering. This could be a consequence of um, lack of reporting. This could be a consequence of lack of reporting, but ultimately, uh, this action by the state government 100% means that... What is this? 1,200 uh, cases? Active COVID, COVID cases in Uttar Pradesh crossed the 1,200 mark. You know what this is like? This is like when conservatives would go to uh, Australia and be like COVID cases are spiking in Australia despite lockdown measures. And then you would look at the Australia COVID cases spiking last year. And it literally would be like Australia had eight people report having COVID and it spiked from one person having COVID. Okay. And it's like, okay, but they have eight people with COVID dog. What the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Now, obviously, this is a little bit more significant if it's going from uh, 10 to 200. That is a bigger increase. In a region that is gigantic, though, that's not that big of an increase, ultimately, because you still need to, you know, factor in the totality. Big Equestria does not have the foothold in Uttar Pradesh yet. Because the globalist overlords haven't figured out how to make horses survive there yet. At Hassanab, I just had my flight canceled, so I'm stuck at LAX until 11 p.m. So I get to spend all day watching. No, my exponential growth is still scary, Chatters. But you have to still remember, it's it's you know obviously that means that there is a lot of COVID cases. Okay, obviously that means that like COVID cases are increasing, and that is a cause for concern. It's such a cause for concern that the fucking state authorities already recognize that it was a cause for concern and are taking measures against it. So ultimately the, the idea that like these cases have completely flatlined is false. Okay. But I will admit that the number a lot of the issues is still Koyman's incredibly fucking low. On his misunderstanding okay. Core That's just the reality. The CDC. It is incredibly fucking low for a region also that has experienced with long 481 deaths, uh, uh, over, uh, 41, 481 thousand deaths overall in India. Okay. And this is one of the more populous regions, right?
Now, those numbers can be wrong. But also, there's still exponential growth, which is scary. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because the fucking people that you rely on for this information are telling you, no, this is a cause for con concern. So I'm sorry, excuse me. I don't give a fuck what Robert Malone has to say or what Facebook has to say when the motherfucking local authorities are like, no, this is an issue and we're going to take action. What's Robert doing? Is he going to go to India and be like, don't actually take action. Things are going really well over there. Dash is flatlined right now. The rest of the world is yeah. yelling about Omicron and, and, and hospitalizations. Well, South Africa isn't. But uh, Uttar Pradesh is still flatlined in terms of deaths. So they were visited by someone in the Biden administration? Is that right. No, there's a meeting between Joe Biden and, and um, Modi. And you and believe that out of that meeting, all they decided? I, know, I don't know what they nice. said. I didn't, uh, wasn't invited. Together, all I know, I know is that immediately Jeff afterwards, there was a decision not to disclose the contents of what was being deployed in Uttar Pradesh. It, it's so crazy to imagine that in the middle of a pandemic, there's one place, uh, uh, one area of India that's extremely successful in combating the virus, and they're not going to say how they did it. I mean, that's that's nuts. That's, I, you know, so that's, that's where I kind of... My stance in all of this is to say, here are the facts. Here are the verifiable data. Dr yeah, it is, it is impossible to believe. So what makes you want to believe it? Like, why, why are these people that are so skeptical of, like, the mainstream narrative or whatever, where does that skeptical bone go? Where does that fucking muscle of skepticism go? When it's someone that they believe agrees with their fucking worldview. Okay. <laughs> oh, damn. Like, these motherfuckers are always are like, I'm so skeptical. I'm so skeptical of the mainstream narrative. And then whenever it's like someone like Robert Malone being like, COVID is gone in India, actually. No one, no one has COVID there. Right? No one has COVID there at all, actually. And it's a big secret that they're keeping away from the, they're, they're keeping from the rest of the planet, a big secret that you and I are going to be in on, okay? Then that's not something that causes skepticism in you? Like, when you hear something like that? How the fuck? Draw your own conclusion. Okay. Now... February of 2020, you catch it. What did you take? Fomotidine. Fomotidine and anything else? No, there's nothing else available. So this was so early on in the pandemic. How did they, did, did you wind up being hospitalized? Nope. No? I did have, I did develop long COVID. And people always. Oh my God, this motherfucker got long COVID too. Wait, so I guess he's not like a, he's not a COVID is fake, Andy. Right? Or is he a COVID is fake, Andy? I don't even fucking know. I always get the, Stop why did you take the vaccine? Well, I took it fairly early on. on. I took Moderna because that's what the National Guard was deploying in my very rural county in uh, basically central northern Virginia. Isn't there some evidence that the vaccine actually helps people with long COVID? That was the, um, that was the rumor at the time. That was... Th uh, that's the rumor. Guys, the, the vaccine... Uh, oh... He got fucked by COVID, but he's not a COVID denier, or he's not a COVID denier. He believes COVID is real. I mean, he's, it's on his fucking tie. But he believes that he took the vaccine and it still fucked him. So, like, that's why he believes that, uh, you know, COVID doesn't, or the vaccines don't work. Got it. Then that was, I took it for two reasons. I had long COVID. It was supposed to help with that. And I knew I was going to have to travel internationally to France um, and Portugal in the near future. Now, is there any evidence that the vaccine helps against long COVID? Or is yeah. there, <clears throat> anecdotally, is there anything? Uh, anecdotally, there was. And I have not seen a peer-reviewed oh. solid publication or, or um, preprint that supports that now. But that was the active rumor at the time. And since then, what we do know for sure, well-documented, 
if you've got prior COVID and natural immunity, you you have a higher risk of adverse events from the jab. What? Bro, when he started that up, I thought he was going to go somewhere like actually normal. Like, well, you have a higher risk because like natural immunity does not have the same staying power and consistency that like the vaccine does. He just said, like the first half of that sentence, if he continues on to say, Natural immunity does not offer consistent, uh, uh, you know, protection from COVID because it, it's entirely, uh, it, it is totally up to luck. And also how big of a fucking viral load of COVID you got originally, uh, that your body will develop, uh, the proper antibodies. So, you know, you're not actually protected from COVID if you have natural antibodies and you think you have natural immunity. I was wrong. He's just going somewhere completely different and just making some shit up about getting COVID makes it worse for you if you get the vaccine after you got COVID. And he said, well documented. And I've never, what the fuck, where is the documentation for that? Now, the other part of my story that often gets overlooked. So I took two doses of Moderna. With the second dose, I developed stage three hypertension with systolic blood pressure of up to 230, okay? I'm lucky to be alive. You know, what it means is I've had a stress test of my aorta and my cerebral vascular system, and I didn't have a stroke, and I didn't tear my aorta all to shreds. But it's a good thing. I had, I had irregularity. Oh, my God. This motherfucker is also double vax, dude. I hate that. I hate that, bro. You don't deserve it. I'm, I'm straight up. Because, like, then he's not going to die of COVID. You know what I mean? Like, he's just never going to die of COVID. It's very unlikely that he dies of COVID now that he's fucking double vaxxed. You know what I mean? So he can just go on and continue to fucking lie about the, 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 uh, the, the fears, the fear mongering that he engages in with COVID uh, or with respect to the vaccines. So that sucks. Now, other people who listen to this fucking dickhead won't get the vaccine still. Well, he's double vaxxed the fuck up and he's fine. Parties of heartbeat, incredible hypertension, pot syndrome. Why are you wishing death upon people? What? I'm not. I'm simply stating that because of the efficacy of the vaccines and promoting your audience, do you believe people should be able to receive real facts and make their own narrative? He's a doctor, question mark. Why are you wishing death upon people? I'm not. I'm simply stating that he will not benefit or he will not experience the negative consequences of his own misinformation that he is spreading that he is free to spread because ironically he got the fucking vaccine and therefore is protected from the worst consequences of covid so if you think that i'm wishing death upon him then you have to recognize that you know covid is deadly and that you have to recognize also that the vaccines are protective and if you do agree with that, then you also personally will understand that this person is engaging in really dangerous anti-vaxxer uh, rumors. Narcolepsy, restless leg syndrome. That is worth a ban because you must be new here. People like that exclusively come in here to fucking, you know, agitate and try to get a couple fucking weirdo clips and then move on. These are all known side effects that are associated with the vaccine. They're relatively less frequent than the myocarditis in the children, in male children in particular. Immunity is not based on antigen-specific antibodies, idiot. There are B cells, NK cells, CD4 plus CD8. We have no evidence that these vaccines produce equivalent responses compared to natural immunity. <clears throat> so one thing that you said about uh, immunity is correct, and that is that it is multifaceted. It's not simply just antibodies that you're developing, but the factor that you can compare at the very least is antibodies okay and when you do look at that it shows that the natural response that your body develops uh, antibodies is inconsistent in comparison to vaccines vaccines create uh, a, a long-term sustainable and consistent level of protection from the worst symptoms of covid in a way that natural immunity unfortunately cannot it is inconsistent. Okay? Ayahuasca man?
Do, but this means they're all they known on the list of adverse events. And it's Marcella very clear Evan. that people that have natural mob, immunity his shot was not everyone have a shot. much higher risk factor um, for this whole spectrum of adverse events but even, if they get jabbed. Even though that's known, there's so many people out there telling people who've just... Yeah, it's known, dude. It is known, totally. Where is it known? Joe Rogan's meme folder. What is known, motherfucker? What are you talking about? That's known. It's known that you get, like, adverse reactions to the vaccine if you get the vaccine. This is psychotic. That's not known at all. Where is this known? I need- I don't even know where this fucking piece of misinformation came from. This is the worst part about debating fucking flat earthers and anti-vaxxers and conspiracy theorists of this magnitude. Because, like, they live in their own universe where they have their own set of rules and their own set of misinformation. And you have to fucking know every little thing that he's talking about. In all in all, slightly higher risk of moderate side effects on the first dose. Same risk for the second dose. Total increased risk for non-naive subject is negligible. He's fear-mongering a bit, but based on some studies. Oh, so they're fucking... Uh, they are jumping. They're, they're greatly expanding and exaggerating the potential side effects that you may uh, experience from the vaccine. Like when you get COVID and then you get vaccinated, you have a slightly but negligible uh uh likelihood of of like what having uh, feverish uh, experiences symptoms is that it but ultimately your body's protection for the uh, for the next six months at the very least for all of the known variants at the time is still infinitely uh better than you know having a fever for a day or two especially considering that Chatter is literally wrong about vaccine immunity. Penn study details robust T-cell response to mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. A more durable source of protection. <sighs> okay. It's recovered from COVID to get vaccinated. It is. Um, there is a number of things here that um, are not supported by the science, I'll say gently. Um, to be less gent since, gentle since we're on the Joe Rogan show, I can speak freely. It's no, he got... So we misunderstood. He didn't say he got COVID, long COVID, after he got the vaccine. He said he got long COVID, then he got the vaccine. And he's saying that because he got long COVID, then he got the vaccine, he almost fucking died from the vaccine. It's knocking futz. This is just wrong. It's not consistent with the data. Well, it's, it doesn't make sense either. What we know about natural immunity is that natural immunity, at least according to that study in Israel, which is like, what, 2.5 million people, I think? They said... Oh my God, bro. They still work with the one... They still work with a bastardized understanding of prior fucking studies that also fucking showed not what they think it showed. I am losing my fucking mind. They literally latch on to a singular study where there is a sea of studies that counter it immediately, okay? And they go, nope, don't care, dude. Don't even care if they pulled that study, okay? Don't even care if they fucking pulled that study. Don't care if it's not peer-reviewed. Don't care. Don't care if I misunderstood the, the, main, uh, the main point of the study itself. Doesn't matter if there are a million other studies that straight up uh, show damn near scientific consensus on, on uh, natural immune response, uh, natural response in terms of immunity versus the COVID-19 vaccine's efficacy. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter that 90 plus percent of people that are fucking dying of COVID are straight the fuck up unvaccinated. None of that matters to me, okay? Fuck that. I saw one study. Incredible. In fucking credible, dude. <sighs> Said that it's between six and 13 times more effective than the vaccine. That's that not real, dude. It is not fucking real, dude. It is not real. That is not real. Natural immunity is not 6 and 13 times more effective than the fucking vaccine. That is completely made up. That is bullshit, dude. The only time where there is like definitely, the only time where 
you have a the highest likelihood of not getting COVID again is when you're recovering from COVID, like in the immediate aftermath of requ- uh, recovering from COVID. That's it. Other than that, the fucking drop off in the aftermath of that recovery period is so severe and more importantly is inconsistent. Some people develop antibodies for an extended period of time. Other people do not. And that's precisely why they still say, including in that fucking Israeli study, that the highest level of protection against COVID is if you get COVID and then you still get fucking vaccinated. Okay? If you get vaccinated, you have the you have an incredibly high level of protection from the worst symptoms, okay, of COVID, hospitalization and death. If you are if you get COVID and on top of that you're vaccinated, you get the highest level of protection from COVID. One week after getting COVID, you are 1 million percent immune solution. Get COVID every second week. Yeah, it's just like, and it's also, you can, you can so easily disprove this ridiculousness with anecdotes even, because that's what these thumbs respond to, right? Anecdotes. That's the most important thing. That's more important than data, right? Okay. Well, there are fucking plenty of anecdotes like Bolsonaro. One guy just literally point the Bolsonaro. Motherfucker had COVID like 11 times, dog. That's it. Okay. Fuck the data. Just move on to anecdotes. One guy, Bolsonaro. Don't be like a, I know a guy. Don't be like a, you know, a buddy of mine, a friend of mine. Okay. Just say a friend, my buddy of mine is the fucking leader of Brazil. Okay. Jair Bolsonaro got COVID a million fucking times. That's it. That's all you need to know. That is six or 13 times more effective in hospitalized, preventing hospitalized COVID. It's more like 20 or 27 fold. Yeah, 27 fold. You know what's really funny about this also? That means you still have to get COVID, you fucking dickhead. And guess what? There is no ethical scientific community that would turn around and go, just get COVID. Fuck it. If COVID has already killed millions of fucking people, that is psychotic. Okay. You can't do that. If COVID is the number one killer of people between the ages of like 35 to 54, okay, for months on end in the United States of America, then you turn around and you say, just get COVID, lol. You're a fucking psycho. You can't just, medical authorities can't say roll the dice, especially when there are other safer alternatives that have been proven to be safe and effective. I'm losing my mind. Better at protecting against developing the disease. Remember, infection does not equal disease. Um, And that's only one of over 140 studies that document that natural immunity is superior to the vaccine-induced immunity. And oh, by the way, as a vaccinologist and an immunologist, I wouldn't expect anything different. But this Here, and I've talked about this a million times over, but it bears repeating. Having COVID-19 does not offer you significant protection from getting COVID-19 again, okay? In the same way that being vaccinated does. Why? Because... Uh, First of all, if you have natural immunity, do I still need a COVID vaccine? Yes, COVID-19 vaccines are recommended even if you had COVID-19. At present, evidence from John Hopkins Medicine and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control Prevention supports getting a COVID-19 vaccine as the best protection against getting COVID, whether you already had the virus or not. Here are some recent studies that support getting vaccinated even if you already had COVID-19. Why? Because vaccines add protection. A study published on August 2021 indicates that if you had COVID-19 before and are are not vaccinated, your risk of getting reinfected is more than two times higher than for those who got vaccinated after having COVID-19. So even if you got COVID and you didn't get vaccinated, if you got COVID and you did get vaccinated, you are significantly less likely to get COVID, okay? Another study published on November 5th, 2021 by the U.S. Center of Disease Control and Prevention looked at adults hospitalized for COVID-like sickness between January and September 2021. This study found that the chances of adults testing positive for COVID-19 were 5.49 times higher in unvaccinated people who had COVID in the past than they were for those who had been vaccinated for COVID and had not had an infection before. So no, getting COVID does not offer 
a higher degree of protection to you than getting vaccinated. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite according to these studies that we are showing right now. Not only that, but it's 5.49, five and a half times. Oh, shit. Fuck. What is happening, dude? Okay, it's back. No, it's gone again. I'm still here. Stop, 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 stop. I'm still here. I have my internet. I don't know what happens. You just like... No, it's not my internet. It's something else. I think it's my fucking GPU or something. I, I, Cause look, look, I experience a fuckload of drop frames and my, and my bit rate tanks to zero until it picks back up again. And I don't know what it is. I think it's my GPU. Okay. Oh shit. It is definitely my GPU. Yep. This is a consistent problem. This is a consistent fucking problem with this PC. I don't know what's going on and I don't know how to fix it for the time being. But the issue is that it doesn't even show me what the fucking bug is. It says that there was a driver timeout that occurred on your system. I need to like... I need to fucking figure it out. This is so annoying though. CDC. But it definitely isn't because of my internet. My internet is fine. The bitrate keeps tanking because of uh, an internal driver problem. It's buggy. I don't know what it is. No, Linus never fuck with my GPU. You fuck with the CPU by adding this program that, uh, that takes ninety nine percent of the CPU processing uh, capacity, the CPU power. But it doesn't matter, and it's not the temperatures either. Okay, let's just keep going. Is it still laggy? If it's still laggy for you, then you have to refresh. It's on your end. Like there's no, there's no lag on, on this end. That means like your Twitch is having a hard time. All right, let's keep going. Steve recently disputed this, didn't I, they? This, it was a fascinating. What did the CDC recently dispute? By the way, as a vaccinologist and an immunologist, I wouldn't expect anything different. But the CDC recently disputed this. Didn't they? I, this, it was a fascinating uh, play. So the CDC, uh, for most of us that are at all objective in the science world, look at what's going on at the CDC aghast. I mean, the CDC has just um, compromised now. Um, what they did with that was a very small study with intrinsic bias all over the place, much, much smaller than the uh, Israeli study that you're citing much less rigorous, less statistical power, and they pushed that out as, as their um, justification for their position concerning uh, natural immunity. But and who funded that? Who funded that study? CDC, it would be the federal. What the fuck? Bro, even the fucking Israeli study showed that you should still get vaccinated. What the fuck are these people saying, dude? And it's not even just that. It's not even just that. There have been there have been multiple fucking studies on top of that. I cannot believe this dude. It's just like, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, they're just like fucking you over. If COVID becomes like the seasonal flu, are you going to get a booster every year? I mean, it completely depends. Maybe. How do I check my GPU usage chatters?
It's in task manager. Will it still show up though? I don't think so, right? I don't think it'll show up anymore on the performance side. Like, yeah, it's not. My GPU is at fucking 15% right now and it's 57 degrees. Holy shit. It seems like it's that's hot, no? Task manager performance, 57, 57 degrees. You can right click your taskbar. No, no, I already opened it. Uh, Saranoid. My driver version is 301, uh, 30.1325.505. And the driver date, last update was 10.5.2021. So there's like not a new, there's probably a newer driver. And also it's 57 centigrade, not Fahrenheit for the chatters, obviously. Who are wondering. But I would not, I would not update the driver right now. Cause if, if for me to update the driver now would require me to end the stream. So I'm not going to do that. Okay. Um, I don't know how to get to the event viewer, but yeah, the article that you're suggesting is this one that was in science magazine. That's back from fucking August 26th. Okay. This is the article that they're talking about. It's the one, it's the one fucking article that they still use from August 26th, 2021. Okay. The study demonstrates the power of the human immune system, but infectious disease experts emphasize that this vaccine and others for COVID-19 nonetheless remain highly protective against severe disease and death. And they caution that intentional infection among unvaccinated people would be extremely uh, risky. What we, don't want to what we don't want people to say is, all right, I should go out and get infected. I should have an infection party, says Michael Nussenzweig, an immunologist at Rockefeller University, because somebody could die. The research also found that people who had SARS-CoV-2 previously and received one dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech were more highly protected against the reinfection than those who once had the virus and were still unvaccinated. As an Israeli medical professional who's about to get his fourth dose, there is no such study. In fact, Israel was the first offering third dose and will be the offer the first, uh, fourth. Yeah. This guy is a dumbass, doesn't know nothing about PCs, but is a COVID expert. Haha, ha, what a loser. I am not a COVID expert, but the problem is neither is Joe Rogan. And the problem is I'm not a COVID expert, but at least I listen to the experts. And Robert Malone is not a COVID expert and he's actually spreading misinformation. That's the main difference between someone like Joe Rogan and someone like myself is that like, I'm not just simply looking for people who agree with me. And also knowledge over the computer has absolutely nothing to do. It has literally nothing to do with your usage. Your driver's not updated, man. Update your damn drivers. Okay. All right. I'll update it after the stream. What is this? European Medicines Agency? Stop looking at U.S. publications. What? What the fuck is this? Why are you sending me this link? Like, I, I don't get it. Uh, evidence is the initial protection is half a year after the primary vaccination. Uh, that's what... The medical experts say here as well. I don't think it's your driver, but your GPU. Why would it work for a while? No issue. And then the same driver and start fucking up. I think your GPU is borked. I think maybe. 
Anyway, let's keep going. Government. So they funded this study. They yeah. did it themselves. It's a CDC study. And do you, Dog, do you... so did the fucking Israeli study. Like, someone has to fund studies, brother. So what's up? You just don't... Basically, what he's stating is like, I don't give a shit if the study agrees with me on who is funding it, but I do give a shit on who's funding the study if it, you know... I give a shit on who's funding the study if it doesn't agree with my preconceived biases. Do you believe they did it with the intent of coming to the conclusion? You're the asking me to apply intent, and I've had too much time with lawyers, <laughs> and I'm not going to do it. Good oh, interesting. Oh, no, dude. Can you imagine being fearful of fucking litigation for for uh, uh, defamation in the United States of America. Can you imagine? At that stage, you know you're a fucking piece of shit. You know you are purposely fucking spreading misinformation. In America, one of the benefits of living here is that absolutely, like, our free speech doesn't extend to whistleblowers, obviously, yada, 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 and it's uh, mostly to protect fucking hate speech and shit like that. But this notion that you should be fearful of defamation suits unless you are willingly spreading misinformation, is bananas, okay? That's why Ethan literally can fucking go off and be like, you know, come after me, bitch. I don't give a shit. I'm not willingly spreading misinformation or saying something that is slanderous, okay? It still isn't great, obviously, to get fucking lawsuits out, out the wazoo by like a psychotic fucking uh, multimillionaire. But again, if you are fearful of defamation in the United States of America, if you're fearful of losing a defamation suit in the United States of America, that means you're fucking willingly spreading misinformation, okay? Intentionally. Because it is very difficult to successfully sue someone for defamation in the United States of America, okay? you <laughs> so either way um there's many 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 studies that point to the fact that natural immunity is superior absolutely having recovered from covid like and, over 140 and also multiple studies that show that people who have had covid who get vaccinated after the fact have a higher risk i think it's between two and four fold right you're on top of the data two and four fold risk of adverse side effects increased risk yeah it increased risk Okay, I need to see more of this. This is it? That's it? That's like the whole thing? The whole Joe Rogan, Dr. Malone interview in full? No, I don't want to fucking watch the... What the fuck is this website, bro? People. This is psychotic. I don't know about this website, homie. This seems fucking sus. Oh just live their lives and make their own choices. They were saying that millions of people would have died. Hold on. Um, AP uh, is claiming, uh, a claims misled about COVID-19 effectiveness against Omicron. Claim COVID-19 vaccines don't provide protection against the new Omicron variant of the coronavirus. AP's assessment which is missing context. While it's true that people who are vaccinated can still get infected with Omicron, early research has shown that Pfizer and Moderna mRNA COVID-19 vaccines are effective at preventing severe disease, hospitalization, and death stemming from the new variant. A video clip circulating on social media shows Dr. Robert Malone, a frequent critic of the COVID-19 vaccines, who has researched mRNA vaccine technology, stating that the shots don't protect people from Omicron. Don't people realize that, like, these guys, whenever they get caught in a fucking lie, just move the goalpost and, like, move on to the next thing? They just keep also... You know, they just, they just keep fucking uh, jumping to the next thing and then the next thing and then the next thing. That does not, you know, that does not strike people as uh, suspicious. The people that like watch this shit. Me being vaccinated is literally the only reason why I'm not in the hospital dying right now. Did you just use the bias fact checker? You're clearly a bootlicker. A bias fact checker, like the Associated Press 
The Associated Press is what? Biased towards fucking people getting vaccinated? What, what kind of stupid take is this? We're not talking about American foreign policy. If we were talking about American foreign policy, yes. Then I would say the Associated Press is fucking biased. If we were talking about like healthcare, yes. Then I would say the American, uh, the Associated Press is biased. They're talking about fucking vaccinations. Whose boot am I licking, dude? Your dumbass fucking uncle's boot so he doesn't die? The funniest part is like the Associated Press, along with, of course, Western outlets can be incredibly biased when they're covering, you know, State Department propaganda. Except the issue is they never see the biases there. They never see the biases when it comes to like pro-capitalist uh, uh, manufactured consent, pro-imperialist manufactured consent. The bias is only there when it's something that I'm afraid of, okay, like a vaccine. I have three doses of COVID. Friend is unvaxxed. Had to go to the hospital. I just have a sore throat and can't taste. Dr. Malone had more bad takes on the show. Um, basically, European intellectual inquiry into what the heck happened in Germany in the 20s and 30s. You know, very what? intelligent, highly educated population, and they went barking mad. Um, and how did that happen? Um, the answer is yeah just like use vaccines that's how right yeah we need to do an inquiry into what happened in germany no one has ever discussed the material conditions leading up to world war ii famously this is not like one of the uh, best researched uh, subject matters of recent history so it's cool that you know dr robert malone is finally okay finally someone is fucking saying you know, wh what happened leading up to, you know, the Nazi rise of power in, in Germany? Groundbreaking research coming from Dr. Malone. I can't wait to hear what he has to say. Mass formation psychosis. When you have a society that has become decoupled from each other and has free-floating anxiety what? in a sense that things don't make sense, we can't understand it, and then their attention gets focused by a leader or a series of events on one small point, just like hypnosis, Dude, I love these guys, man. This is what no theory does to a motherfucker unironically, okay? Just, but it's true. It's true. If you don't have any sort of fucking grounding in dialectical historical materialism, then you're obviously going to seek out weird nonsense, like some kind of weird fucking additional reason. Like, oh, it was because we were really scared of one another, okay? Like, dive a little bit deeper, brother. Where is that anxiety coming from? What happened? What were the lead up? What was the lead up to that? Okay. No, it was just like people had like really fucking bad vibes, dude. Motherfucker just said people had bad vibes leading up to World War II. Okay. And then some guy came and said, we're going to unfuck these vibes, bro. Yeah. Hitler was like, bro, we got some... We got some very bad vibes here, okay? Very, very bad vibes. I will solve the vibes. I will solve them, okay? Uh, and then, like, fucking all of, the, uh, all of the, the oligarchs at the time that were also terrified of, like, uh, I guess, uh, working class organizations, like, working class organizing uh, and, and uh, you know, the Industrial Revolution uh, and the aftermath of the Industrial Revolution creating a perfect opportunity at the fucking factory line to be able to uh, organize uh, uh, along uh, class lines or the the uh, even leading up to that, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Germany was moving into becoming a, a uh, labor oligarchy as well, just like the United States is currently, okay? Uh, and how much that, you know, made the bad vibes go away to uh, the, the third world that you were fucking exploiting uh, relentlessly. But even then, there was still an opportunity on the factory floor, and the, the factory owners themselves were terrified of this prospect as well. So they were like, yeah, fascism is kind of good vibes in comparison to communism. Yeah, I agree. So then, you know, all of that was just, it's just all reduced to vibes, okay? All of that was uh, <laughs> reduced to basically vibes, and, uh, you know, Hitler was just like, yeah, the Jews, the worst vibes of all. So that's, that's how it worked. Really cool. I mean, this guy did it. He did it. He 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 solved uh, the the reason for why World War II happened. They 
literally become hypnotized and can be led anywhere. And one of the aspects of that phenomena is the people that they identify as their leaders, the ones typically that come in and say, you have this pain and I can solve it for you. I and I alone, okay, can fix this problem for you, okay? Then they will lead, they will follow that person through, it doesn't matter whether they lie to them or whatever. The data are irrelevant. And furthermore, anybody who questions that narrative is to be immediately attacked. They are the other. <clears throat> this is central to mass formation. <laughs> Just... I'd be real sus if I was talking to fucking an anti-vaxxer like this and he coughed, I'd be like, nope, I'm out, dude. Fuck that. Oh. Did this motherfucker just cough, bro? Nope, no shot. He's literally vaxxed though. He can still have COVID. Who cares? But you're vaxxed with so the vax does nothing to protect you? Dude, just because I'm vaccinated doesn't mean I want to fucking take COVID on the chin, especially for like the worst reason possible, which is like talking to Dr. Robert Malone, motherfucker. Do you not understand that? Yes, you can still get COVID even if you are vaccinated, okay? It's just... The impact of COVID is far less severe when you are vaccinated and boosted. Okay. It's like chain mail. Chain mail doesn't offer full protection, but it doesn't matter. It's like a vest. Okay. You go out and you wear a vest. Guess what? You can still get shot in the fucking arm. Guess what? You can still get shot in the vest. Okay. But the goal is you don't fucking die from a bullet that hit you in the chest area. Because the vest stops that, okay? It's still gonna hurt you. Do you want to get fucking shot in the chest with a vest on? But you know what kills you? Getting shot in the chest with no vest. Psychosis. And this is what has happened. We had all those conditions. If you remember back before, 2019, Everybody was complaining, the world doesn't make sense, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we're all isolated from each other. We're all on our little tools. We're not connected socially anymore, except through social media. Um, and then this thing happened and everybody focused on it. That is how mass formation psychosis happens. And that is what's happened here. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what's going on. This is going to be just like... Uh the this is going to be just like world war ii because of bad vibes and you need to be shot twice with a helmet from an m4 only pussies died a bullet with no vest yeah exactly you're you're the guy who's like Man, I know Hank died of a bullet to the chest, okay, directly to the heart because he wasn't wearing a vest. But guess what, dude? Hank was a pussy, okay? I, on the other hand, look identical to Hank, okay? And just like Hank, have no protection whatsoever, okay? I'm immunocompromised in the exact same way, okay? I got the same blood disease that Hank has. But guess what? Hank was a pussy. Me, on the other hand, I'm not. So if I get shot directly in the chest, it don't matter, okay? The motherfucker hoping to find people who died after taking the vaccine to make an example for their propaganda. Yeah. I had a coworker as a cop that called me a pussy for wearing my vest. You used to be a cop? And he called you a pussy? Don't you have to literally wear a vest as a cop? That's ridiculous. Yeah. There's absolutely no evidence that the vaccine protects against COVID. The fake news media is trying to divide us. Yep, that's right, brother. Hell yeah. Uh, are there any good ones from this uh, Malone? Malone White? Malone White dick in your mouth? Um, there's got to be some better clippies on this, right? You got you to gotta read the Joe Rogan subreddit, though. They love the mass psychosis. 
both on Dr. Robert Malone and Dr. Peter McCullough episodes, the mass formation psychosis topic was the most intriguing and frightening part. Here's a great video by After School talking about the exact subject is 20 minutes and worth checking out. How an entire population becomes mentally ill. I think the funniest part about mass psychosis is that like, yeah, if you're a fucking anti-vaxxer, you have been whipped up into mass hysteria. Like you, you are, you have the mass mental illness that is not believing in modern medicine. It is one of the most important achievements of all time, of all mankind, okay, is the freedom to be able to survive disease. It's like kind of the whole purpose of, purpose of formation uh, of societies. You know what I mean? We get together and we brave the elements together. We put our minds together. We put our collective information from like centuries on top of uh, uh, one another, like building blocks so that we can finally fucking not see the ad at the top of the hour when it's served to you. You know what I mean? It's like a 60 second ad break. And some of you think I can brave that 60 second ad break, but it doesn't matter because if you want an ad free broadcasting experience and all you need to do is get gifted a fucking sub, but that's inconsistent. It's like natural immunity. So if you don't want to fucking rely on that, then all you need to do is, you know, get your own, make your own luck by subscribing for $5, which is like a shot basically or for free if you don't have five dollars because the government is giving you the vaccines for free in the form of a twitch prime the government here being the jeff bezos jeffrey jebediah bezos government okay straight up this is how it works okay fucking mass psychosis dude dude it's like it's the same energy as like you know men will Men will go on the Joe Rogan experience and become anti-vaxxers instead of going to therapy. It's the same fucking uh, attitude as that, okay? Dudes will literally fucking believe in, like, mass hysteria uh, causing the Holocaust uh, instead of reading theory, okay? That's what it is. Emily Platt, thank you for the five gifted subs. And Tavisaurus, thank you for the ten gifted subs. There are more clips on his Twitter. Let's go. Years ago, when you felt sorry for the people. Do you remember back a couple of years ago when you felt sorry for the people in the People's Republic of China because their Internet was filtered? They Dude, my favorite part about the social credit system is that we have it. Okay. My favorite part about like the Chinese Communist Party social credit system is that like Joe Rogan straight the fuck up. Straight the fuck up is like, oh, this I've seen this. Why are you guys all adding me on this? Huh? I will not eat bugs. I noticed girl with bangs ordering the bugs. Waiter, what is your bug of the day? Why are you adding me on this? What's the reason? Okay. Yeah, whatever. It hits a little too close to home. Sometimes you got to eat bugs to impress the cute girl with the bangs. I think that that's bullshit that you are, you know, making a joke of my situation. I'm weak. I'm a weak man. Who would 100% without a doubt let Ariana Grande spit in my mouth. A guy on my wife's unit is dying of cancer, refused a blood transfusion because he didn't want vaccinated blood. These people are hopeless. Oh, that's awesome. That's fucking bananas dude i mean fuck it that's yolo yep r slash joe rogan added again after joe's alleged the inventor of the mrna vaccine on as a guest once again the joe rogan subreddit is fighting it with itself as joe does yet another podcast focusing on covid this time with the alleged inventor of the mrna vaccine technology dr robert malone people questioning the doctor's legitimacy are met with criticism i'll trust this vaccine i'll trust this vaccine doctor over you the left is so afraid they've been wrong and they would rather block information that could be very important. I just, I feel like that has to be projection, right? Like, he has to fucking recognize to some degree that, like, there is a very real fear that is paired up with the fear of, like, maybe you'll get COVID and die.
Are you guys excited to see the results of the clinical trial you took part in in 55 years? Yes, dude. Because I will see the next 55 years. Whereas you're going to probably fucking die of the next viral disease that you also take a similar approach to COVID with. And say, fuck modern medicine. I'm on my own. And then you're going to fucking die. Your insides are going to fucking explode and kill the rest of your family too in this one incredible fucking poetic uh, justice moment because you're a dumbass, okay? You live like a dumbass. You do not have, you lack the fucking thing that like human beings have, which is the willingness to survive, okay? And the open-mindedness to the centuries of medical information that helped us arrive at the point that we're at. You, in prior circumstances, are the caveman that says, oh, I do not care about uh, weather conditions. I will go outside when there is fire. You are coward. Why would you be afraid of fire? And then you walk directly into the fire and engulf yourself in fucking flames. Okay? You are the guy during polio that says, I will brave polio. Fuck the medicine. You are the guy that says, I will take smallpox and take it on the fucking chin. Many people like you have died time and time again. You are not special. You will also fucking die. Okay? As we all do. But the whole point is avoiding the very obvious ways of dying. You, on the other hand, refuse to, but you're lucky because at least because we formed, you know, civilized societies that like, we'll still keep you going as best as we possibly can. But eventually, one way or the other, that attitude that you have is going to cause you to fucking die. Let's hope that it doesn't also kill your friends and family. Turknukam, <laughs> ah, our, our Louisiana Turk is here. Says Louisiana dan selamlar. Karım nurse practitioner her gün Covid'den ölenler hakkında akşam evinde konuşuyor. Çoğu ölen hala Covid diye bir şey yok diyor ölüyormuş. Sikeceğim bu eyalet abi ya. Turk Nukem is the only Turkish man who thought LA was Los Angeles and ended up in Louisiana with his wife who is a nurse practitioner. And apparently uh, his nurse practitioner wife is saying that every night she talks about people dying of Covid who even in their final breaths are saying COVID is not real. And that's how they die. And he says, fuck this state. Oh my God. That's what, that's what happens when you go to LA thinking that it's, you know, Los Angeles, but it's actually Louisiana. Hey, yo, myth with the fucking fat raid. Holy shit. What's up, myth? He's been doing overtime now because patients are rolling in. Yeah. Can you blame people not trusting pharma after the opiate shit fest you had in the U.S.? There are a multitude of reasons not to trust big pharma. The profit motive is at the heart of all of those arguments. But I am the number one anti-big pharma profit Andy, okay? And I am telling you that just because big pharma is gross, just because big pharma is exploitative, just because big pharma paired with the American government will have a tendency to overprescribe medication to you at the behest of said big pharma corporation's profit margins does not change the reality that the entire planet is currently engaging in a safe and effective and efficient way of dealing with this preventive uh, this disease by taking preventative measures okay big pharma is evil but that doesn't mean some of the medication, or at least even not even some, most of the medication, uh, by the way, a lot of it, which is created by publicly funded research, mind you, okay? A lot of that medication is still life-saving. As a matter of fact, I'm a firm believer in nationalizing pharmaceutical corporations and nationalizing the healthcare system in its entirety, okay? Not taking insulin for your fucking diabetes because of the opiate crisis, he's fucking psychotic, okay? You're gonna die. You're gonna die if you don't, it, especially in a case where you literally have the capacity to take insulin, because many don't, because of how expensive that shit is. You have the money to buy insulin, you have the healthcare to get insulin, and you're like, I'm not taking it, brother, fuck it. I'll take my chances with my own personal body, you know, developing the immunity to diabetes. That's what you're doing.
especially at a time when in the United States of America, plenty of people are like, you know, should I pay for this insulin again this week or, or this month? Or should I fucking pay for, I don't know, uh, a wedding that I'm going to have with my wife? Uh, I'll, I'll just, I'll not take insulin for one month. It'll be okay. Boom. Now you're dead. That's a real story, by the way, that happened in America. You're wrong. I got my grandmother off of insulin. Diet changes all that was needed. Oh my God. Genius idiot. Stop, please. Don't be one of those fucking idiots. First of all, yes. If you have drastic life-changing uh, surgery, for example, like a gastric bypass, you can get away uh, with with never taking insulin ever again and actually avoid, you know, uh, getting diabetes in certain circumstances. But just a simple fucking dietary change without like literally losing 100 pounds is not going to do that for you. And also, that's type 2 diabetes. We're not talking about type 1 diabetes, which is genetic. And you can have it regardless of what your fucking body looks like, regardless of what your uh, insulin production is, because your body's simply not producing it. Okay? Like, type 1 diabetes is when you have to have a fucking pump in your body. Because, you know, it's just completely outside of your own control. Because your body is simply not producing it. And, and yes, not all type 2 can be reversed either. But, uh, you know, gastric bypass is a successful method for uh, type 2 in, in some circumstances. Anyway, let's get back to this fucking dumbass. They weren't allowed free speech. They're... Do you remember back a couple of years ago? We got here from the CCP. When you felt sorry for the people in the People's Republic of China because their internet was filtered. They weren't allowed free speech. I got a PLB The government back. told them what to do and think. Okay. Now, here we are. Okay. And the next thing that we all feel sorry about, social credit system. Okay? Wake up, folks. Wake up. It's coming. If we give in to this, we give in to vaccine passports and having an app on your phone that shows everything you're doing in terms of your medical history. And they've even offered people extra credit. There was an article on Yahoo about having access to your browser history. And they, they framed it in this very positive way that having access to your browser in history may uh, allow you to receive extra credit. So y you would be available, uh, so, you'd, you, you'd have credit available to buy a home or a car. So bingo, okay? We already know what social credit systems feel like. Um, we call it our credit rating agencies, Okay. And you know what those guys do. It doesn't matter whether or not – if it's on your record, it doesn't matter whether or not you did it or what the extenuating circumstances were. It's in their algorithm and you will get your score and your score basically will determine the tax on your access to credit in the form of the interest that you pay on the money that they have been given by the federal government. OK? That's the way this ecosystem works. Um, they get that money at a huge discount. And then they decide how worthy you are to receive it if you want to have credit. And Wait, did he just say we already have a credit system and it's bad? Did I miss that while I was peeing? Because I am 100... Dr. Robert Malone? Wait a minute. Perhaps this man has some good ideas, my friend. history may uh, allow you to receive extra credit so y you would be available uh, so you'd, you you'd have credit available to buy a home or a car. bro can you imagine wait there's so, so this entire argument is like literally the ccp's social credit system is better than the american credit system because at least you have a way to like literally salvage that without just magically having more money When I say that, people say I'm a fucking CCP propagandist. What the fuck? This is crazy. This is madness. What is happening right now?
which by the way i don't even believe that the social credit system and the way that like the western uh, uh western fucking outlets uh, describe it is good it's not i don't know if how real it is because i've seen conflicting reports like even foreign policy talking about how social credit is not the same as the way that uh, other western outlets report it you're off at rewatch dumbass wait car so bingo okay we already know what social credit systems feel like um we call it our credit rating agencies okay and no i i didn't misunderstand it he said that like you can fix your credit their internet was filtered they weren't allowed free speech their government told them what to do and think okay now here we are okay and the next thing that we all feel sorry about social credit system okay wake up folks wake up it's coming if we give into this we give into vaccine passports and having an app on your phone that shows everything you're doing in terms of your medical history and they've even offered people extra credit there was an article on yahoo about having access to your browser history and they they framed it in this very positive way that having wait that already happens what the fuck Bro, why does Joe Rogan keep talking about things that are literally currently happening as though it'd be terrifying if that would happen? W what the fuck? Dude, what, what do you think? That, dog, you're on Spotify. Do you know how fucking invasive Spotify is? Where they, like, pinpoint exactly when you're going to need to get, like, I don't know, uh, new fucking diapers or whatever for your child? by your listening habits and all the other ways that they can fucking put their tentacles in your fucking phone and track uh, your bullshit. They literally create flavor profiles for motherfuckers off of like what kind of psycho nonsense they, they uh, listen to. And uh, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, Asian boss, what do the Chinese people think about the credit system? Oh, I love this. What the fuck? Oh, we, we're definitely watching this after. Ooh, that's good. Access to your browser in history may uh, allow you to receive extra credit. So y you would be uh, available, so you'd, you, you'd have credit available to buy a home or a car. So, bingo, okay? We already know what... So, so Robert Malone is aware, at the very least, of the credit system, which Joe conveniently ignores every time this conversation comes up, and he's bringing it up. Joe's saying that, like, we're going to have a social credit system which we already do. We have a credit system. Okay. And it's fucking disastrous for the record. I am in favor of no credit system. I'm in favor of no social credit system. And I'm in favor of no credit system in general for the record. I just want to point that out. I think it's fucking terrible. I think it's bullshit. I think that like the way to, or if you are going to have a credit system, it should not only be solvable. Like the problems that you create within the credit system should not only be solvable by literally fucking going out and like magically making money appear out of thin air. Okay. Like, because you're poor and you have bad credit and then you fucking default on loans or some shit. The only way to fix that is by magically making more money. But once you fucking default and you have a bad credit, all of a sudden, all of your opportunities, including finding shelter, are greatly reduced, greatly limited. So it becomes infinitely harder to, uh, to, to survive and get out of that situation so you can, like, pay your debts. So it's fucking completely unacceptable and incredibly fucked. what social credit systems feel like um we call it our credit rating agencies okay and you know what those guys do it doesn't matter whether or not if it's on your record doesn't matter whether or not you did it or what the extenuating circumstances were it's in their algorithm and you will get your score and your score basically will determine the tax on your access to credit in the form so you think a sorry note should fix your credit or community service? Yes. Yes. Not a sorry note, but yeah, community service to a certain degree should absolutely fix your credit score. You know what else should fix your credit score? First of all, renting. You should never be able to look at people's credit to rent. Straight up. You should never be able to look at people's credit score for renting, okay? Number one, never ever. But if you do actually end up renting, your rent payments should go towards fixing your credit. 
Your payments to your utilities should go towards fixing your credit. Every single payment that you make should go towards fixing your credit. Now, some people will say it does, but it does not. That's bullshit. Only in certain circumstances does it actually help. You can send a sorry letter to clear negative marks from your account. It's called a forgiveness letter. Wait, really? I didn't even know that. Holy shit. Isn't that, isn't that what a credit score is for? No, a credit score is supposed to be for taking loans, okay? A credit score is supposed to show how diligent you are with paying your fucking debts. But unfortunately, in hyper-capitalist America, a credit score is basically used for everything, including getting fucking jobs, dude. That's nuts. What are you talking about? What you're talking about would be the right thing to do, but a lot of shit d doesn't help your credit score. That's what I'm saying. Form ...of the interest that you pay on the money that they have... Oh, things that shouldn't lower your credit score. For example, if you have no prior credit history, your credit score shouldn't be low. That is insanity, okay? I had student loans that I uh, did not pay off in time way back in the fucking day. It's been like, I think it's like where I'm almost over the hump uh, of like having them lower my student uh, loan uh, or lowering my credit score, right? But I also don't have a credit card. So I paid off all of my student loans. Why the fuck is my uh, problem with like paying off student loans when I had significantly less money still impacting my credit score when I paid it off in fucking full? Why? That makes no fucking sense. Also, on top of that, why the fuck is it that uh, my me not taking on any loans or taking on any fucking credit cards or anything like that actually hurting me in the long run? Because I work with just a debit card? That's psychotic to me. It's psychotic to me that you are, are basically saying you have to take on debt so that you can be allowed to take on debt when you buy something massive in the future. Like they're saying having no debt is a bad thing. Okay, like I have to, when I buy a car, okay, when I buy a car this year, I'm going to have to get it on, on a loan. Like I, I can't, I have to make payments on a car. I could just outright buy it like that cash. Okay. I have enough cash to be able to buy a car, but I can't do that. Why? Because I have to build credit. That is psychotic. Okay. That is completely psychotic have been given by the federal government, okay? That's the way this ecosystem works. Um, they get that money at a huge discount, and then they decide... You're wrong, though. I am literally not wrong. That is exactly... And how responsible you are financially. You have literally no idea what you're talking about. No credit isn't bad credit. What? Are you fucking nuts, dude? Have you ever clicked on, like... Any credit karma type fucking website or Googled this at all, let alone talk to a financial advisor. One of the main factors that they look at is how many credit cards you have, what their fucking debt limit is, what you're spending on those credit cards are. You literally, quite literally have to take on debt so that they can know that you're good at uh, and responsible at like debt. You're a child. I do not care about uh, your your uh, posturing in the chat is a fucking child. How worthy you are to receive it if you want to have credit, and so oh yeah, checking your debt, checking your credit also makes it worse. Again, insanity. Pings on your fucking credit score, like like hard pings on your credit score, straight up fucking lower your credit. Things that lower your credit is insane. Like when you talk about it in America, it's like completely psychotic. They won't even let you get a credit card without credit unless you're fucking making a lot of money. You have to get a secured card, which is just essentially, which just essentially is money you give them that they charge you interest on. Yeah. And by the way, the reason why the system is set this way is because people make more money off of you when you have bad credit because they can fuck you harder. That's the point. 
It is very difficult to get this across to people who, uh, I guess, live a life of privilege and can't comprehend it. But that's the only reason why we have a credit score in the same in the way that we do here in the United States of America. Okay. <sighs> If you want to understand a little tiny version of the social credit system, it's right there in your credit score. You can only use 30% of your credit limit or your score goes down. There are so many little ways that your credit score absolutely fucks you. It's just crazy. Hard pulls are based on applying for credit. You can check your credit card report for free. Yeah, you can check your credit report, but that's not the same as like, fucking getting a loan or some shit okay or opening up a new credit card as a matter of fact you can't yeah go open up a new credit card without a fucking hard pull yeah guess what it's not happening they're gonna fucking literally pull your credit it's gonna lower your credit score okay wait what the fuck oh no little baby f that also like, yeah, you get a job, they're going to hard check it in some instances. You get a house, you get a rent, you, you have to go pay, uh, you get a new place to fucking rent, they're going to hard check it. You can't just like send. Also, then there's the FICA score. There's like three different scores that you are, that you can easily access. And then there are other scores that banks look at, okay? Mortgage uh, uh, brokers, or rather people that are offering loans for fucking big items have a totally entirely separated credit system that is even more rigorous and even harder to fucking uh, have good credit on. So yeah, you have TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, uh, whatever the fuck, and then you have like separate credit scores on top of that. It is straight up the worst fucking thing. So many of those little things could be changed in this system. But they won't. Why would a bank loan you money without some sort of proof that you're financially responsible? What's an alternative to the credit system? Oh, so you now have admitted that you're wrong and you've moved on to the next talking point. Got it. Thanks, man. You are out of touch, he says. Yeah, I'm out of touch. The guy who said not no credit isn't bad credit. So you do understand that no credit is bad credit. And this is the way that because you're using the bank propaganda to fucking say that no credit is bad credit. Why is that the only way that you can fucking develop a credit score? I already described it to you. We make purchases non-fucking stop. Why can't that build credit for you? You are the reason why banks can get away with fucking you. You know what I mean? If you get like a secured credit card where you literally give the bank money so that they can charge you interest for it, you're, you're literally justifying that system. You are saying, I want the bank to fuck me. It's actually great. What an insanely idiotic, moronic fucking take. Why are there no other ways to show that you would you could be a responsible debtor? Why are there so many ways where your credit score can go down uh, that have absolutely nothing to do with like how great you are with debt, okay? Why can't you just pay off your utilities bill to build your credit on top of your rent to build your credit? What's up with that? Why is there no unified credit score system? Why can't you look up your credit score without uh, get a hard pull on your credit score without your without your fucking credit uh, score going down? There are so many. There are so many different reasons as to why this system is completely exploitative. It's literally designed so that poor people get fucked harder. And you are here advocating for that system. One, because you yourself are profoundly privileged. And two, probably because you're stupid. No, I didn't. No credit is no credit. Yeah. This is why I fucking hate debate lords chatters, okay? Because the only reason why this fucking baboon is bringing points up right now in the chat while still getting thoroughly fucking dismantled by the reality of the credit system is because he wants to get a fucking rise out of me, okay? Maybe clip something and, and be like, I won this argument. Look how angry I got him. Because ultimately, if you don't believe in anything, then in the end, the result can just simply be, a result for victory for you, could simply be, I got Streamer Man upset. He doesn't give a fuck. 
He doesn't have bad credit. His parents are probably wealthy enough. Okay? He will never have to, you know, uh, he, he will never be impacted by this. So he could just fucking lie. You know, I push back on some of the psychotic talking points and then he can continue lying or move on to the next thing. None of which touches him. Just hope that like, you know, your parents aren't as fucking stupid as you are. Okay. And like they have good credit forever. Okay. Just, just hope. And having bad credit is not a consequence of stupidity either for the record. But like they don't fuck up your credit and then you have to learn very quickly how bad it is to survive in that situation. you got a lot of money in the bank, you also get crazy good deals and rates on loans that poor people will never even know of. I mean, yes and no, because banks will still fuck you. I mean, I, I have a decent amount of money and, uh, and, and uh, threatening to move it around is not enough. I'll tell you, the, the amount of money that you need to have for a bank to give you a fucking good loan, unless you like have a prior relationship with that bank, one of the big banks especially, the amount of money that you have, like they told me straight up, $10 million. If you have $10 million, Bank of America will uh, open the conversation to offer you better loans. Because if you threaten to move $10 million from Bank of America to a different bank, then they will say, okay, we'll listen to you. Straight up. Anything below that, you have to have a good working relationship with Bank of America to begin with. 10 million is when you get a, get to HNWI or VHNWI status and you get a whole different world of financial access and accommodation. What does that mean? I don't know what this means. No, I'm saying you can have a, I have a decent amount of money. I don't have 10 million fucking dollars. Okay. So that's precisely why when I threatened, soft threatened to fucking move my finances to a different bank to get a good loan when I was, you know, loan shopping, my bank was like, Omega lol, get the fuck out of here. Who gives a shit? Come back to us when you have $10 million. That's literally, that's the, that's the conversation I had with the bank, with Bank of America. They were like, that's very cute. It's very cute that you think you are a high net worth individual, but you are not. You dice checked and failed. That's exactly what happened. I literally dice checked. Yeah. Imagine bankers in 30 years saying Omega lol at people trying to get a loan. Yeah, I mean, probably. What is this? What the fuck is this? Right. And you know why it never has. Yeah, we already saw this. This shit's crazy. All right. Parents try to get credit cards for the kids as soon as they're of age. Help them in the future. You don't need to give it to them, but it helps a ton. Yeah, I mean. High net worth individuals, 10 million plus, which is when you are officially able to use things like the secret phone line at banks, airports, etc. Wait, what? That's a real thing? There's secret fucking phone lines at banks that you can use if you have 10 million plus? What the fuck? I think that's when they straight up are like, we waive all fees. You know what I mean? Like, when I had a lot less money than I do now, when I had, you know, when my bank account was at the capacity that it would be overdrafted regularly okay i got hit with penalties non-fucking-stop and the algorithm 
and this was like there was a class action lawsuit because of this by the way the algorithm would do it in such a way where they would process payments as best as they could to ensure the maximum amount of overdraft fees that i would get sometimes i would get literally like eight overdraft fees in a fucking row okay it'd be like oh one dollar purchase let's move that to the back of the fucking line okay let's move that to the back of the line to process your overdrafts so that like when you go over here's a 35 dollar overdraft fee oh you've made three one dollar purchases dumbass get fucked it's like well if you had posted the three one dollar purchase on the top then i would get one overdraft fee but the bank decided fuck it we're gonna do three overdraft fees for you because you made three individual purchases no i didn't no i didn't ironic how you are poor to banks but you were seen as one percent of the haters i am one percent i am literally not to the haters i'm just functionally and fundamentally in the one percent that is ridiculous okay like that that's true my haters think the problem is my haters think i i have like you know billions of dollars or 10 million dollars you know what i mean oh fuck when i don't even have a gpu that doesn't fucking drop frames when i'm streaming fuck Uh, Bank of America is getting class action sued for that predatory overdraft algorithm. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So at this level, that example is so broke boy specific. You are right. Yeah, because it's real because I experienced it. That's why it's broke boy specific. And back then, $35 when you're already getting fucking overdrafted, $35 when you're already, like, go getting into the red is gigantic, okay? It's catastrophic. Why the fuck am I paying the bank to literally use my money just so they fucking move numbers around? That's insane. That is yet another example of uh, something I always say. It is expensive as fuck to be poor.